Hi everyone, welcome to the session. Uh, in this session, I'm going to continue my discussion on uh, consolidation accounting. And under that, in this particular session, I'm going to talk to you about goodwill impairment and how to record the respective entries when there is good, goodwill impairment. Okay. Now, uh, when there's a goodwill impairment, the first and foremost, we need to look at how the uh, NCI was measured. The non-controlling interest was measured. Okay. If the NCI, uh, the NCI can be measured uh, in two ways. Okay. So if you take a goodwill impairment, so if you take a goodwill impairment, okay. So goodwill impairment. First of all, you need to see how the goodwill, uh, the, how how the NCI, the non-controlling interest is measured. So this is the first question you need to ask. How the NCI is measured? Okay. NCI can be measured in two ways. Okay. So NCI can be measured either based on the net assets, net assets of subsidiary company or else the NCI can be measured at the fair value. It can be measured at fair value. So these are the two ways where the NCI can be measured. So when the NCI is measured at net assets, then goodwill relates only to the parent company. Okay, goodwill relates only to the parent company. So in this scenario, goodwill relates only to the parent only the parent company however if the uh, if the nci is measured at fair value then goodwill relates to the parent company portion as well as non controlling interest portion so these adjustments will have to be made so you need to uh, allocate the goodwill impairment based on the ownership of the, uh, the parent and the uh, non-controlling interest. For example, let's say uh, the goodwill was measured at at the time of acquisition was let's say twenty-five thousand US dollars. So if the NCI is measured at net assets, so what you can do is this entire twenty-five thousand can be adjusted uh, in the goodwill the full amount. Uh, against the retained earnings. Okay, so what is the double entry for this? The double entry for this uh, goodwill impairment, if it is measured at net assets, uh, let's say uh, the goodwill uh, goodwill at acquisition was twenty five thousand. Okay, so then what you need to do? You need to debit. You need to debit the retained earnings. by 25,000 and you need to credit the goodwill 25,000 okay because the goodwill uh, is a debit uh, it's an asset it's on the debit side in order to record the impairment you credit the goodwill and you debit the retail earnings 25,000 okay uh, when it comes to the NCI valued at fair value uh, let's say the, the the ownership is 80% and uh, for NCI is 20%. Parent company ownership is 80% and the NCI is 20%. So if you take the same example, if the NCI is valued at fair value, what you need to do is you need to credit the full amount 25,000 and you need to debit the retained earnings. You need to debit the retained earnings to the extent of 80%. Of 25,000 okay so which is going to be if you take 25% on 80 80 percent 25,000 times 80 percent which is going to be 20,000 and you need to debit the non-controlling interest for this percentage which is going to be 5,000 and you need to credit the entire amount to the goodwill amount goodwill account 25,000 okay so these are the adjustments that you need to make 
uh, when the NCI is measured at net asset basis or fair value basis where the goodwill requirement is given. Okay. On 1st July 2015, uh, P company acquired 80% of the equity shares of S company. Okay. So P company acquired 80% of shares of S company on 1st July 2015. Okay. So the parent company has acquired 80%. So therefore, the non-controlling interest portion is how much? 20%. Okay. At the date of acquisition, uh, goodwill was valued at twenty thousand US dollars. Okay. So on this particular date, the goodwill, goodwill was how much? Twenty thousand US dollars. And the non-controlling interest was measured at fair value. This is very important. The non-controlling interest was measured at fair value not at the net assets of the subsidiary okay so please remember that the non-controlling interest was measured at fair value this is very very important okay in conducting the fair value exercise on s company's net assets at acquisition p company concluded that the parent uh, with a remaining useful life of 10 years the p company concluded that the plant plant and equipment with a remaining useful life of 10 years had a fair value of 100,000 in excess of its carrying amount. Okay, at the time of uh, acquisition, usually what, happen, what happens is uh, the assets and liabilities will be revalued. So those revalued uh, amount will be adjusted in the net assets when you calculate the goodwill. However, S company had not incorporated for fair value adjustment in his uh, individual financial statement. Uh, the plant and equipment had a fair value of had a fair value of 100,000 US dollars okay in excess of its carrying amount okay so in excess of its original uh, the carrying amount uh, was 100,000. So this was not incorporated in S company's the financial statements. So, at the reporting date, 31st December 2015. So, this is the acquisition date. This is, this was the acquisition date. So, what is the reporting date? 31st December 2015. This is the financial year end date. Okay. At the reporting date, 31st December 2015, the goodwill was fully impaired. Okay. So, what they are saying is the goodwill. This goodwill was impaired. Uh, for the year ended 31st December 2015, S company reported a profit for the year of 150,000 US dollars. Okay, so S company, this is S company, reported a profit of US dollar 150,000 uh, for the full financial year. What is the uh, P group, that is the group, profit for the year ended 31st December 2015, that is this date, okay. Uh, that is attributable to non-controlling interest. Okay, so what they are asking is the profit for the year ended that will be uh, recorded in P group. Okay, on 31st December 2015, that is attributable to non-controlling interest. So we need to identify the profit attributable to non-controlling interest on 31st December. 2015. Please remember this company was acquired on 1st July 2015. So therefore 1st July 2015 to 31st December 2015 how many months? 6 months. So when you take the profit please remember you need to take uh, the half year the profit for the calculation. Okay. Now so what you need to do is you need to calculate the profit attributable to not controlling interest. So now when you take the profit the profit is given 150,000. So, however, this profit is for the full year. So, therefore, you need to take half of the profit, so which is going to be uh, 75,000, of which the non controlling interest portion is how much? 20%. So, when you take 20% of this, how much? 150,000 uh, times 150,000 uh, divided by 
2 times 20, which is going to be 15,000. So this is 15,000, the profit. Now from this profit, okay, this is the attributable profit to non-controlling interest. We need to make two adjustments. One is the goodwill impairment. Okay, so less goodwill impairment, which is uh, twenty thousand times twenty, which is going to be how much? Four thousand. So twenty twenty thousand times twenty is going to be four thousand. So why we have to make this adjustment? The question says. Uh, at the time of acquisition, the non-controlling interest was measured at fair value. Okay, so at the time of acquisition, the non-controlling interest was measured at fair value. On that basis, the goodwill was calculated. Now it is impaired. So as a result of that, what you need to do is, you need to uh, calculate the goodwill impairment attributable to the non-controlling interest, which is 20,000 times 20, going to be 4,000. Then, uh, what is the next adjustment? Next adjustment is the, the fair value of the plant and equipment which was not recorded in the subsidiary company. Sorry, uh, S company. Yes. So you need to uh, identify fair value of uh, the plant and equipment uh, which was 100,000 100, and the depreciation for 100,000 is going to be for the remaining useful life 10 years. Okay. Uh, then it is 10,000. This is for the full year, half year is going to be uh, 5000, on that the non-controlling interest portion is 20. Okay, so when you take that 5000 times 20%, which is going to be 1000. Okay, so, so what is the total profit attributable to NCI on 31st December 2015, which is going to be 15 minus 5000, 10,000. So this is the, the profit attributable to non-controlling interest. So this will be recorded in uh, P groups profit for the uh, year ended 31st December 2015. In the financial portion, you need to show the profit uh, attributable to NCI as 10,000 US dollars. Okay. So this is the answer for this particular question. Okay. So uh, with that, I will conclude the session. I'll see you soon with another video. So uh, thanks for watching. Bye for now.